When I was younger, there wasn't a fail button. There was no doubt in my mind that I wasn't going to be successful. I just felt like anything that I was going to attempt to do, I was going to find a way to win. My name is Colin Parkai and I own a company called Colpac Logistics. We specialise in everything from zero tonne to 140 tonne. Brisbane local and Australia wide. Lots of things have changed over the years. Seeing how far we've come as a company, the equipment we've got, the blokes we've got working for us. Even our first yard to here. A yeah. big dirt block that we rented and now we own this. We have a property in Meadowbrook. We've got a massive workshop here, big yard, 20 trucks. Everything is in-house now. Great office, great staff. It's a great business. We offer a great service. I've got the best equipment and I've got the best operators. I can't lose, mate. <laughs> I would never, ever, ever have imagined us getting to here. I grew up in South Auckland, which is known to be fairly rough, and I was a bit of a rat bag when I was younger. We didn't have much. I didn't finish school. I never got school C or anything like that. No business degrees, nothing. And I had this goal of joining the army and getting a trade of some sort, but I was too young for the intake, so I ended up getting a job as a tyre fitter in a mechanical workshop. I couldn't understand why my dad wanted me to work there, but he goes, if you put your head down and work hard, Cole, you could get an apprenticeship out of this, you could become a mechanic. And I did have good work ethic, and I hooked in there, and within three months they offered me an apprenticeship. Part of the workshop is they had tow trucks there. I would have only been 17 years old or something, and I loved it because we would do recoveries. Because it snowed in that area, going out there and you don't know what you're up for, but it was just a challenge of being able to do something that not a lot of people, you know, could do. Two weeks before finishing my apprenticeship as a mechanic, I got offered a contract to go and play football. I never actually completed my apprenticeship. <laughs> During this time, my wife was doing her nursing degree. She had friends that had moved to Brisbane and they said that there's plenty of work here. Stacy said, I want to go to Brisbane and be a nurse. And I go, yeah, well, let's go. Both of us were 21 years old, April of 92. I just thought, well, I'm going to rock up into Brisbane and see what happens. Got a job as a mechanic, servicing on sides of roads and stuff like that. I hated it. <laughs> I hated it. I'd come from a place where the temperature was pretty good and I come to Brisbane doing a service in someone's car park, you know, sweat pouring off me and I heard this V8 just winding up and I seen this tow truck racing down Ipswich Road and I've gone, I know how to drive tow trucks. I worked for two of the biggest towing companies in Brisbane and I had a reputation there for um, doing the right thing anyhow. I always treated everyone else's businesses like it was my own. I was never there just to earn a paycheck, it was a little bit more than that to me. I worked for some very influential people and one of them ended up being a mentor for me. He helped me buy my very first truck and I ended up uh, with three trucks working for him, running his business. And that's where everything got a little bit crazy for me. I was working a lot of hours back then. Seven days a week, minimum 12 hours a day. I was just focused on work and bringing home an income and that sort of stuff. And I decided that uh, having a relationship with my kids was way more important. I thought I was doing the right thing by providing them with a lifestyle. Uh, they wanted me to be there as a dad and I decided to basically just quit and hang out with my kids. My name's Mason. I'm Jacob. I'm the younger brother. I've been driving here for, what, six years or something? And I'm the older brother. I've been here for 10 years now. I was like probably eight when Colpac started. So I sort of got to see and remember the progression. I think I started actually working properly when I was like 12 here. And we used to come yeah. here and spend all of our school holidays here. Yeah, all the making school holidays here. Yeah, making public, <laughs> public money. I'm extremely proud of my sons. Jacob, my oldest son, has wanted to be a trucker his whole life. The first time I ever drove a truck in a paddock as long as I was like six, it's always been a passion. First day of school, he stood up and said, my name's Jacob Parkeye and I'm only here to learn how to fill out a logbook and I'm out of here. <laughs> Five years old.
Mason, my second oldest son, never wanted to be a truck driver, ever. You want to be a footy player? Yeah, I want to be a footy player. Very good rugby league player, very, very good boxer. You knew when you played wrong or you did wrong? Don't be sitting in the car. <laughs> I had no interest in being a truck driver whatsoever. Oh well, yeah, yeah, these ones lift. Every now and then you get up. I never got up. <laughs> he asked me if I had a job for him at Colpac and I said, yeah, come on down and you can wash trailers or something. First day on the job, he went home and he told his mum washing trailers is for mugs. I don't want to do that. His mum said, well, you know, you got to start somewhere. I think it was Jake just said, just get your license. Because we're a lot of, oh, that we got, yeah, we got him a Tiltray license. Just a little baby one. Mason, at that stage, had an automatic car license. Found my little truck license <laughs> twice. <laughs> yeah. I remember the second time I come back, dad was just laying on the bench out the front. And he goes, and I was like, there he goes. <laughs> Went out and got himself a license driving a manual truck and I could not believe it. I go, wouldn't you do the easy option and just go and get an automatic truck license? He goes, nah, I want to go for my manual. He's just excelled ever since. It's contagious, this sort of work, I don't know. Went from part-time to full-time to stop playing football. The funny thing about Mason is he never ever showed any interest and he's probably one of the best drivers out there in the industry. He looks up to Jacob quite a bit on what Jacob's been able to achieve and Mason's followed him straight along. Yeah, obviously hard work pays off. I mean, look at us now, we're 20 years on. I started Colpac in January 04. So I had a lot of people I dealt with over the years asking me what I'm doing. And I go, I don't know. I'm just, I'm just trying to become a better, better dad and husband. The name Colpac, me and the kids were driving one day and we were following a Lynn Fox truck. Apparently I asked them where Lynn Fox got their name. Oh, well, Lindsay Fox. Colin Park, eh? Colpac. <laughs> a lot of the problems I had with previous companies was they weren't really family orientated at all. The business wasn't built around them having a family life or social life, it was just work, work, work. I thought, well, if I'm gonna do something, I really wanted to have a good work-life balance. As we grew as a business, we were able to do the convoy for kids. It's a money raiser thing, but for me, it was more just a day out with the kids, and the kids got an opportunity to go with their dads in their trucks. Go like this. <laughs> oh, I can't get that low. See? The looks on these kids' faces, you know, and, and just how proud they are of their dad. The entrance into here took forever. No, but it took like 25 hours. Yeah, 25 hours, so cheesy. Oh, it took for five hours. <laughs> 960 sucking trucks come all, all up here. Amazing. Chockers full of trucks. Just imagine the weight was sitting on there, Bruce. <laughs> this is the first time I've done it. I've always wanted to do Convoy for Kids. I've brought my grandson with me today to show it all. My grandson loved it, mate. We went with Dad nine years ago, and we haven't really done it since. And we've got all these nice trucks now, so we've got to show them off, so yeah. All for the kids, my mate. For the kids. All for the kids. The future of trucking, maybe. Great course. It's still a great course, yeah. You're getting to hang out with a little fella in the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Little Cohen's my two-year-old grandson, and I love him heaps. You like trucks? Wow. Yep. Fortunately for me and Jacob, Cohen loves trucks. What was your favourite truck? Unfortunately for his mother and his grandmother, he loves trucks. <laughs> I'm assuming the little bugger's going to come along and want to be a trucker as well, just like his dad. <laughs> this convoy is good because it's for the kids. We've all got kids, we love kids. For me, it's important for us as a coal pack to come together and just hang out and show off a little bit. For events like this, brings everyone in the company together, helps build a bit of culture, and it's a good day off work. It's Ada. I'm Mick. Oh, Michael. There's my mother calls me. I'm Bailey. Garth Gibson. Lincoln her. I'm Nathan. Old Chubsy. Been here probably six years, give or take. Two years. Two and a half years. Just over three months. Just over a year. It's good. Good bunch of blokes that we work with. Started one of our smaller trucks. Now I've got this beauty. <laughs> Whole pack crew is good, mate. <laughs> humble, humble, mate. Hard working and humble, men. The atmosphere around the place. Everyone's happy, enjoyable. You can have a joke. 
Everyone working hard, working together. I really like working here. Not one day's the same. Every job's different, so that's what I like about it. I like being away. I like seeing a lot of different country. I recently did Brisbane to Darwin, Port Hedland, Perth, and then back to Brisbane. We go to some pretty cool places, especially that bottom part of uh, Australia, like Jake would agree. Yeah, it is beautiful nice, on yeah. the bite. So I did a formal. That was the first formal I ever done. Her brother drives a tilt tray for us. He showed her a photo of all our trucks and she picked mine. Because she was so nervous, she was a little bit shy at first. I was like, oh, you want to play your music? And she's like, no, that's okay. And then we rock up there and she looks awesome. The truck looks good. Everything's perfect. <laughs> Dropped her off at the red carpet. Everyone looked at the truck and people are taking photos of the truck and stuff. And I thought that was pretty cool. There's a lot of cool cars there. And I seen one other truck and my truck was definitely better than that. I hope I made it tonight. So Jacob and Mace, they're more into the heavy haulage and the line haul. Heavy haulage is 100 ton type stuff. And we seem to be pretty good at it. And we enjoy it, like, oh, I love it. Like, love heavy haulage, love the challenge. Jake and Mace do the real big stuff. I'm not perfectionist. No, I am, I'm a perfectionist. Like, everything I do has got to be as close to perfect as I can make it. Like, look, putting a machine on straight is like rule number one. Mine is, I'd rather spend a couple more minutes throwing extra chains on or whatnot. Spend more time now so I don't have to spend it later on on the side of the road. Getting out in the road for the first time, you're sort of getting a feel for the load, the way it feels on the back, the way the trailer's tracking and all that sort of stuff. So I'm always pretty anal about like having the windows down and listening to the load, listening to the truck, and getting a good feel for everything. Because normally in that first little stretch, you can figure out if something's not quite right. Mm. You're six metres high, just over five metres wide. So there's a few little obstacles. Bridges are a problem because we're always at, we're over height. So you've got four detours, four low bridges. And then once you get going from Mount Crosby, it's smooth sailing until you get to Toowoomba. Yeah, we're 165 tonne up Toowoomba range. The best feeling, the best part of the trip is when you get that tower off you, you feel a sense of accomplishment. In about a hundred ton lighter yeah, and a lot quicker yeah, on the road. Yeah, you feel a hundred ton lighter. <laughs> kind of cool to see a hundred ton just like that and off he goes. You see all the tyre pressure comes yeah, up, all, all the trail, trail lifts back, up, up a little bit, it's happy. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of cool like looking off in the distance, seeing all the towers out there and knowing that you had a part in that. Well, the business is massive now. It seems to me a bit of a blur over the last 20 years. Back in the beginning, I was everything. Truck driver, mechanic, phone answerer, bookkeeper, I was everything. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always idolised my dad. I've never seen anyone work as hard as him. It's funny, when you kick off something like that, you're so naive. I think if I thought about all the things that I'd have to do, I possibly wouldn't have done it. So being a bit naive helped me. It's a credit to the old man. It is solely owned by him and he's built it to what it is now. There was no plan to get here. I really just wanted to provide for my family. None of us would be where we are today. He leads by example, he does. He proves to us that hard work will pay off. He's a bloody awesome role model. I'm pretty excited to see what the next 20 years will bring. Well done, Cole, on the big milestone, 20 years. Happy anniversary and a job well done. 20 years of hard and good work. And look forward to the next 20. I'd like to think me and him will still be talking to each other in 20 years from now. We're running a, the business pretty successfully together. I've had a lot of good mentors along the way and I see my role moving forward with my sons is more a mentoring role. I don't care what he says, but he's not going anywhere anytime soon. Yeah. And it's definitely going to stay a family business, that's for sure. I wasn't a bad football player back in the day and I always say this to my staff, I say it to my children, you're only as good as your last game. If I played a pretty average game of football, don't whinge that you're on the reserve bench. I've built my business completely on doing the right thing. And if we do the right thing, we get another job tomorrow.